Hey everyone, it's Dr. Dan Ritchie, president of the Functional Aging Institute, and I'm joined by Trevor Whitwer of Coach Catalyst, um, and he is somewhere live in Minnesota in an undisclosed location. We will not rat him out because I know they're still on lockdown. Um, he's going to show us how we can add revenue to our fitness businesses, uh, even if we're closed, uh, which I know many of you watching are still closed or partially closed, or you're reopening this week or next week. So wherever you're at in this, um, I think Trevor's gonna have some good ideas whether you're open, closed, or somewhere in between. So we reopened uh, Tuesday, May 26th. For those of you watching on the recordings someday, someday down the line. Um, and Trevor, I think we had 25% of our clients come back this week, right? Like one out of four. Uh, I even talked to some of my trainers like, okay, so obviously if this is the new normal, our business is going to have to adapt because right. we're not going to survive with 25% of our, our old training revenue. So next week, I think we're going to be up to about 40%, uh, a little bit more. I think we'll see people. My, my impression of this is people are sort of like, I'm going to wait and see what happens the first two weeks, you know? So I'm not going to be the first guinea pig, it's, right? It's, uh, like anything, it's like anything, right? It's even like technology. You have your early adopters, people that'll just jump in right away. And then the people that want to kind of just, all right, what's going to happen oh, yeah. to those people? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like when, we, when we started surveying our clients back in April, you know, we had those people who were like, I'll be there day one, right? I don't care. I mean, I even labeled them like, these are the people who would wade through a swamp of COVID-19 to get to your studio and work out, right? They're like, whatever it takes, I'll be there. And then some other people were like, I think I'll probably wait a few more weeks, see what happens. So so basically, um, we, got, we already have 68 people on live. We'll see, I think we'll get up around 100. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Cool. Um, I will interrupt if, if people ask questions, yeah. um, but otherwise we'll do all the live Q and A at the end. Sylvia is asking, "What city is my gym in?" Uh, I'm in West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, Trevor, I know you're somewhere in Minnesota, but I can't remember the town. That's all right. We won't we won't make it public just just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we're still on lockdown, and I don't know when we're out of lockdown. So. But it's not snowing in Minnesota anymore, so that's probably <laughs> good news. <laughs> so. yeah, right. Still well, I'm going to, I'm going to hop off video and let you take it away. Thanks for your time. And, uh, I'll, I'll just interrupt if there's a question. Otherwise I'll come back at the end for Q and A. Sounds good. And I don't know, do you have to give me sharing? You so should have, you should have sharing. Uh, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. There we go. You should have it now. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'm going to get a couple things set up here and then we'll get this thing rocking and rolling. So like Dan said, uh, I'm in, I'm in an undisclosed location in Minnesota, so we are a little bit behind the uh, behind the curve as far as opening goes. So it's it's challenging to say the least. Um, I'm actually in my facility right now because it's really quiet. Um, so let's share the screen and get the show on the road. So today we're going to talk all about accountability and nutrition, really, and as it as it relates to a new revenue stream, as it relates to your fitness business. And I honestly believe this is one of the easiest additions that you can make to, uh, to your business. That's going to increase your revenue, increase your client results, increase client retention, and ultimately provide you with a more diversified business, right? Because if we've learned anything from the last, what has it been, like 10 weeks now, right? If we've learned anything from the last 10, 12 weeks, we've learned that the businesses that have the ability to, the, to adapt are they going to be the ones that thrive, the ones that survive. And, and so we need a business that's diversified so that we can, you know, if the shutdown very possibly could happen again in the fall, that we have other revenue streams that we can, we can uh, crank up. Um, and so having that diversified revenue is huge in the long-term game. So first things, what we'll get to today. So I'm going to teach you a really a framework um, today, and that's what it's all about. The tools that you use, um, the things that you implement. Uh, it's all going to relate to the framework. And so we can replace tools, we can replace tactics, but the framework is what's really, really important. The principles is another way to say it. Um, and that's going to allow you to be successful. So I want you to really take away some principles today. We're going to talk about how to bulletproof the future of your business, right? We need to make sure that your business is bulletproof just in case things change. We need to make sure that you're focusing on the things that really matter in your coaching practice. Um, I think many times, especially young coaches, get caught up in the wrong things. And so we really need to focus on the things that matter, uh, which is gonna ultimately help you change more lives, uh, fulfill your mission, have that impact, and then ultimately with this, uh, create a new revenue stream. Because that's what we're talking about, right? Um, we need to be able to create diversified revenue in our businesses and nutrition is one of the easiest things that you can do uh, because your clients want it and they're willing to pay for it, right? So, 
Like Dan said, my name is Trevor. I'm located in Minnesota, southwestern Minnesota, so we'll narrow it down just a little bit. Uh, a little bit about my background. Um, I've got a, a bachelor's health and fitness, um, PN level one coach, PN level two coach. I was actually part of the first uh, precision nutrition level two group to go through. Uh, certified strength conditioning specialist, been in the, the fitness industry for about 10 years now. Um, and I have my own facility, actually in the facility right now. I can kind of give you guys a little bit of a tour so you don't see the black wall. But yeah, see, very empty 6,000 square foot facility, right? Great use of space. Um, so, <laughs> we'll play right now. It's kind of so, big, kind of big for a webinar studio. Yeah, right. I know, right? <laughs> so, um, Hold on one second. I just pulled my mic out. So we'll get this mic plugged back in. On my little spin and tour, I just pulled my mic out and pulled everything out. So we'll get this plugged back in. All right. So what we're getting to, we're talking all about all about nutrition. And this was born out of my facility, functional fitness. Um, that's kind of we've been around for for a while and we found that we need to find ways to serve our client base. Our client base is your, your typical demographic, kind of the 40 to 65 year old female uh, looking, in, or looking for fat loss, weight loss. It's kind of their main driver, but we, then we help them kind of look at fitness as this overall kind of life changing thing. And then out of that, we built a software company called Coach Catalyst because we ran into a lot of issues at our uh, we ran, we ran a lot of issues really with nutrition coaching. Um, I just finished up level two. We didn't have a good way to, to be with clients when they were outside of the facility. So we really thought about how do we help the clients in the other 165? So those other 165 hours in the week when they're not in your facility, how are we impacting their lives? Um, and the only way to really do that and to scale it was to build something and there wasn't anything on the market. So we built Coach Catalyst. I'll talk about Coach Catalyst a little bit as it relates to things we're talking about here, um, but this isn't meant to be a, a pitch fest for Coach Catalyst. Um, if you wanna learn more about it, um, I can tell you where to go find out more or you guys can jump on a demo. But this is really about adding nutrition and accountability into your business to provide a stronger, more resilient business. So right now, the old tools and tactics like weren't built for, for what's going on, right? We're seeing a massive shift in the industry and, and a lot of the other fit pros that I talk to, a lot of the other fit pros that I talk to, um, we are, we're, the industry has really been accelerated, right? And so um, businesses that were kind of on their way out, okay, got pushed out a little bit faster. Technology has now sped up to try and fill these gaps that are happening right now. And what was gonna happen in 2025 is now happening in 2020. And so the industry is changing faster than ever. And so with that, our tools and tactics need to, to change a little bit as well. And really what the consumer is looking for is changing big time. So basically everyone in that was interested in fitness was forced into a virtual world, right? Whether they liked it or not, many of them were pushed into that virtual world. There's gonna be a large portion that really liked the virtual world and they would have never tried it unless they were forced into this situation. But now things have changed a little bit and they've gotten a taste of that. But there's also gonna be a portion of people that come out of that and say, hey, I don't like that. Um, and so what this is gonna do is the people that are able to get through this and operate um, in a new fashion are gonna be the ones that are gonna win. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So what used to matter the most, what used to matter the most, workouts, right? Workouts were the most important piece. What type of workouts are we doing? What type of tools are we using? Is it barbell? Is it kettlebells? Is it this or that? Um, people went to gyms for workouts, right? Because we think about how gyms developed, right? It was the bodybuilding era that really brought gyms to the prominence. It was all about big, strong muscles. It was about uh, weightlifting, all of those kind of things. And now aerobics came into play a little bit and all these other but it was all still really based around fitness and physicality which is good and great but now people are starting to think more about like a holistic lifestyle right physical fitness is just one component of that um, just look at like meditation right and and even some yoga to an extent these are kind of these are additions to a physical lifestyle okay and how popular they're becoming in just your general media um, that just kind of shows us a shift that's happening in the consumer's mind. So now many times when, when someone, a consumer joins a, a gym, they're looking for something that's going to satisfy everything. They need the physical component. They need the mental component. They need the nutrition component. They need the community component. Um, and so now we have to start evolving as businesses to, to cater all of these. So we're moving away from workouts. And workouts are still a component. They're not going anywhere. 
um, but we're moving into this holistic, all-inclusive kind of supporting the entire the entire client. So really, the gym of the future is here. Okay, we didn't get to evolve into it nice and slow. Uh, a pandemic has forced us to innovate instantly. My my facility had to go from a physical brick and mortar facility to an online training business in a matter of 48 hours, just like many of the gyms out there. And that was the only way we were we were going to be able to survive. We still had clients to serve, and so we've learned a lot from that. Um, and a lot of that's going to be what we're going to talk about today. So to win this game, okay, you have to provide solutions, not just workouts. And that's probably the biggest thing I've taken out of uh, thinking about what do I want my gym to be like in the future? What do I want my coaching practice to be like in the future is we are more than just workouts and we want to provide solutions for clients. So if you don't take anything else away from this, take away solutions. How do you provide solutions for clients? And we'll talk a little bit more in depth about what that means. Um, and, 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 and kind of can talk about it even more. If you have questions on it, we can go over those. So when we're thinking about nutrition in our adding nutrition to our business, we need to think about strategy. Okay. So there's three main ways uh, that we've at my business been able to successfully um, implement this. And also with lots of other users that we consult with. Um, so the first one is what we call deadline driven courses. And we're going to go through all these in detail. The second one is what we call evergreen curriculum. And then the third one is custom, right? So let's go through these kind of one at a time. So the first one is, is deadline driven courses. So this is the first way to implement nutrition into your fitness business, um, is to create deadline driven courses. The best comparison to this is like a university course or a course at a school, right? There's a deadline. The course starts on June 1st and it goes for six weeks. It goes for eight weeks. The curriculum is preset. You show up to class, you learn the curriculum. Okay. You take tests, yada, yada, yada. So it's just a set schedule on how everything's going to happen. And it's tailored for a, a group, right? But everyone starts together and everyone is moving through the curriculum at the same pace. So some of the pros to this is this is the easiest, this is the easiest solution to manage. Okay, so this is the easiest one to manage because everyone is moving at the same pace okay, you know where everyone is the entire time. This is an easy one to add a community component like a Facebook group onto because you can be very uh, pinpointed and direct with your, um, with your posting there to relate to what you're doing with maybe the curriculum, right? So the next one is urgency. So we have this persuasion technique of urgency. If any of you are familiar with like precision nutrition, right? They do this really well with their lean eating course. They open it up twice a year, okay? Twice a year. And if you don't sign up by that start date, you have to miss out. You have to wait another six months. So they pre-sell it, um, get you on a pre-sale list and then sign up people that way. So it's a nice persuasion lever that you can use. Urgency. If you're not signed up by June 1st, you're going to have to wait, right? So it works really well. And this is also very scalable. Okay? We can run deadline driven courses with hundreds of people and provide a really good experience. Granted, we have the right pieces, tools, softwares in place to make it happen, um, but it's very, very scalable. So you can go even a lower price point if you want to, but then you're going for volume, okay? So that's how I would think about this one is maybe a little lower price point, higher volume, okay? Some of the cons to this, um, it, sometimes it can be a challenge to sell because it's an add-on, okay? Many times people will be training three times a week in the facility, and then we're gonna add on the level one nutrition course or what we call fat loss fundamentals. Okay. You have to add that on. So there's that, there's that challenge that you'll have to overcome. Um, it's not always a cohesive solution. Okay. Um, and so it's not just kind of baked into memberships. It's something on top. And so it feels like I have to do something extra. Um, and then the other issue is it's deadline driven. So that's also a plus, but it's also a minus because what happens when someone joins your facility a week after it starts and they really need that course right? They have to wait till they, the next one. And do you lose that client because of that? Um, I don't know. So those are things you have to weigh on what's important for you, right? So that's the first one to think about deadline driven courses. Okay. Think six weeks, think eight weeks. I've seen those as kind of the sweet spot. Um, I don't like 12 month courses. I don't like six month courses. I think they're too long. I think if someone has a curriculum for a 12 month course, I'd rather have them break it up into four levels level one, two, three, four, and run 12 weeks at a time, or maybe even turn it into six levels and go about eight weeks at a time. Um, and so that's how I would look at that. I like the shorter blocks. It's easier to sell because you can sell them in 
little bits and pieces. And then it's easier for the client to commit because I don't have to commit to the next 12 months. What if I don't like it? Okay. What if all these crazy things happen that clients will come up with in their heads, right? On why they won't be able to complete the material. So that's why I like the shorter ones. You give them that out if they need it. Hey, after eight weeks, if you feel like it's not right for you, awesome. You're done. Um, and then the other thing on that one too, is it gives you actually graduation. So this is a good thing. It gives you graduation points so they can graduate from level one to move to level two, graduate from level two. And so that's just another way or another place that we can, we can, we can give them praise. We can give them encouragement and make them feel good about their journey. Okay. So the second strategy with nutrition coaching is what we call an evergreen curriculum. So if you're familiar with the term evergreen, uh, relates to the tree, right? The evergreen tree and it's green all year round. It's evergreen right? So this is a curriculum that can be started at any time. Okay. It's always fresh. So for this, I would think, I want you to think Weight Watchers, uh, maybe Noom, which is, you know, Weight Watchers for millennials, right? But it's all based around the same concept. Um, they're going to be teaching you information. They're going to be holding you accountable. These are actually really, really, really good companies to model. The last time I checked, Weight Watchers did like $3.2 billion. Like, they are probably one of the most influential uh, companies in the nutrition field. And so we should study the companies that are at the top and what are they doing. Um, and really Weight Watchers is simple, right? It's super, super simple. It is uh, a community aspect with the uh, daily or not the daily, the weekly meetings, right? In person, they have the uh, accountability aspect where they're keeping track of points and also the, the meetings. Right. And then there's an the education aspect where they're teaching you what to do. It's, this isn't, this isn't rocket science, right? It's super simple. Whether or not we agree with the white watchers model and points and all that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't matter. Like they're successful. And so, uh, if you can't get people into your doors and working with you, it doesn't matter how great your system is. Okay. Um, you're not gonna be able to change lives. And so look at some of these companies like white watchers, like noom, um, what are they doing? What kind of technology they're using? How are they presenting themselves? Like Noom is all about behavior change. That's one of their hooks. They're all about behavior change, teaching you the science of behavior, right? And so how can you use some of this verbiage in selling your nutrition coaching programs? Because my bet would be that you could deliver much, much better nutrition coaching programs than a Noom or a Weight Watchers because you have a better personal connection with that client, right? And that's really what you can sell is that personal connection. Because uh, if you go and join Noom, you just become, you know, you get a coach, but like, really, what does that coach know about me? And if they're training at your facility too, you're getting three, four touch points a week, which is uh, like, that can be life-changing for people. And so uh, don't underestimate the power that you have. Um, and you're already doing it probably from a fitness standpoint, but now it's starting to help clients with other aspects of their life that they, that they may need. Um, and so some of the pros of this one, it's evergreen. That's, that's the first one. Happens at any time, people can start at any time. So if the client joins, they can start it tomorrow, right? Um, it's a lower price point, right? Um, it's a lower price point. Typically it's a longer duration. Um, for the Evergreen programs that we run at our facility, we just have a minimum start. So we basically say we need three months to start, but there's no really end date. It can go as long as that client needs it, right? It's easy, it's really, really easy to integrate into what you're currently doing. Right? So if you're already offering fitness, we can create a new solution that has this embedded into it and we can just create a new product. Right? Some of the cons is it's not as customized. Okay? It's still our curriculum. So this would be the same thing with deadline driven cons for both of them. They're not as customized. Um, and for the, dead, or for the evergreen one, you need to be more organized as a person. Because right? if you're having someone start today and someone start tomorrow and someone start next week, there are going to be people that are all over the place as far as if this curriculum is 12 months long, they're going to be at every point in that curriculum. And so you need to be very organized or have solutions or softwares that help organize it for you so you can stay on top of people. Because at the end of the day, like you are going to be the difference. And I think too many coaches, and I am just as guilty as everyone, is they look for tools that are going to do the work. So tools can help with the work, but they're not going to do the work. And the work comes from conversations it comes from real humans helping real humans and so uh, you are the change maker right the software isn't the change maker the software just gives you better tools and it gives you better information and better data so you can be more successful and also so that you can scale so you can work with um, more people if you if you want to work with a thousand people I would go deadline driven type of curriculum 
okay? If you wanna work with hundreds of people, the Evergreen curriculum can work pretty well. Um, and then if you wanna work with tens to hundreds of people, then we move into the third one, which is our completely customized, right? This is our highest, this is our high ticket, one-to-one -one type of counseling is probably the best way to, to describe it or the best comparison in the real world. It's one-to-one, -one, right? Some of the pros here, it's most individualized. So you can create a custom program for that person. You can customize their actions. You can customize their lessons. You're on top of them almost every day, okay? But it's a high, it's a high price point, right? It's a high price point, um, which it should be because it is a lot more of your time um, and it's a custom experience. People will always pay more for a custom individualized experience. And so if you are gonna go this route, price yourself accordingly. And we can talk a little bit more about that when we get into pricing. Some of the cons of this, okay, higher priced, right? Higher price means less people that you can work with. And it's definitely gonna be the most time intensive. I think this is just obvious, right? You're working one-to-one, -one, so it's gonna be more time intensive. So just make sure that you price this stuff accordingly, okay? So now, those are our models, okay? We have our first model, deadline-driven. We have our second model, evergreen, or we have our third model, custom. And you don't just need to pick one. You can have multiple. And I'll show you how we do this at my facility, Functional Fitness. Um, and uh, then you can kind of decide what's going to be right for you because this is something that you need to implement with. So now we look at execution. Okay. Execution. How do we now we've picked our model? Like how do we execute on this? So when I think about execution, I really think about it as, as three parts to our triangle. Okay. We call this the triangle of value. And we actually use it in a bunch of different places on our in our business, but the triangle of value has these three pieces to it. There's a content piece, okay? there's a connection piece, and then there's an accountability piece. If someone has all three of these sides to the triangle, they're gonna be extremely successful. If you're missing just one of these, okay, if you're missing just one, your likelihood of success goes way down because they all have a specific purpose that we'll talk about here next. So let's start first with content, okay? So whenever we're running some type of nutrition program, Okay. We need to educate the client, right? We need to provide them with knowledge and very specific knowledge to what's going on. Not just a, here's your PDF of all the nutrition knowledge in the world and you need to start digesting it type of stuff. We need to provide them with knowledge in, in small chunks that are relevant to what's going on for them, right? Where are they at in the curriculum? If we go back to the school example, you don't learn algebra before basic addition and subtraction right? And so we need to make sure that we are providing a curriculum that's appropriate at an appropriate pace so that we're not overwhelming the client as well. But it should be flexible as well, where if the client is already advanced, we can start them a little bit later in the curriculum. So having that ability uh, is, is really important when you're thinking about the tools that you want to, to use to deliver some of this stuff, right? We need to think about curriculum delivery. How how are we going to deliver this curriculum? Is it going to be a drip sequence? Are we going to use a software like Coach Catalyst with things like lessons? Are we going to use something like a Kajabi, which is a little bit more lesson based? Are we going to use like a ClickFunnels membership site? Like what is our curriculum delivery? What's that going to be like? And how do we, how do we make sure that the client is consuming that curriculum okay? or that education? And then we need to, in that curriculum, be teaching them the what. What do they need to do? Okay, so typically any curriculum that we create, um, we first start with the what, just tell me what to do. Cool. This is what you need to do. You need to eat protein with every meal. Cool. Next one is why, like, why should I eat protein with every meal? Like, why is it important? Like, give me the science behind it. Cause there's going to be people that want to know each of these stages. Right. And the other one is just like, how, show me how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Okay. So I need to be shown how to do it. How do I cook protein? Okay. How do I, how do I cook or how do I, um, how do I cook beans? How do I prepare things? How do I chop things? Like we need to know the how. So they need to have the skills in order to be able to execute that particular action that we want them to execute. So we need to be able to teach them as well. It's all part of this content. And then we want to make it multimedia. Just like yourself, you probably learn in a very specific way. Like you're better at watching video than reading, or you're better at reading than listening. And so like you have to find these different media sources and, and many times include multiple different media sources in the curriculum so people can learn at their, at their optimal level, right? And so this is really advanced stuff. So when you're, once you've got things rolling, this is what we start evolving into. I wouldn't suggest or I don't advise most people to start here. Most people are good with just a written medium um, or they're purchasing someone else's content that they can repurpose. And many times it's a written medium. I like that, but then I like moving to a video medium um, just 
because how people consume information now is many people like video over written. Um, and then having an audio component, I think is really awesome. Um, even if it's just you reading the lesson, because now the clients can throw it in while they're on the bike or doing their cardio or whatever um, in the car. And now they can listen to it as well. So, um, and then adding images and, and making it actually enjoyable to read. Um, there are tons of, there's tons of curriculum that you can purchase out there at Coach Catalyst. We have 30 programs that we've, we've built out for our coaches. So there's curriculum out there. You don't have to start from scratch. You just got to search a little bit to find it. Um, and make sure you get a curriculum that's modifiable too. Um, that's super important. The next piece is connection. Okay. Connection. So when we think about connection, this is between you and the client. Okay, between you and the client, especially with this coaching process. Coaching is very personal. Um, and so a few things with connection. We need to make it easy. Okay? We need to make connection easy for the client. If they have to, to get a hold of you, if they have to go find your email address every single time, that's going to that's gonna make it hard for them to connect with you. Okay? If all they have to do is open your app on a phone and send you a message, that makes it a whole lot easier. Right. And that has to not only be easy for the client, but it has to be easy for you as a coach. And so as a coach, you need to have your connection centralized with your clients. So you're not checking Facebook, IG, WhatsApp, text messages, emails, voicemails, and trying to take all these inputs and then make sure that you're not dropping any balls. Right. That's you're just never going to be able to do it. You're never going to be able to provide customer service as you start to scale. So five clients is easy. Right. 10, 15, 20 getting a little bit more challenging, 50 to 100, we need systems, right? And so uh, it's easier to start those systems early so when you do scale that you don't have to try and figure it out later, right? And so the systems need to be easy for you and easy for the client. And they need to be relevant to where people interact, right? Where are most people nowadays? They're on their phone, right? Everyone has their phone with them at all times. And so we need to be finding ways to meet them where they're at but then also have alternatives. So if someone, if we want to connect with someone on their phone, but they want to read their stuff on a computer, your solutions should be able to be multi kind of multi device, right? But it definitely needs to be relevant to what's going on. And if, if it isn't mobile at this point, it's not relevant because everything is moving to mobile. Everything is moving to mobile. And then that connection also needs to be personal. Okay. It can't just be mass messages. It can't just be uh, a drip email sequence. It needs to be personal to what's going on in that person's, uh, in that person's curriculum or in their, in their study. We need to be able to, to give personal feedback and we need to be getting data in order to be able to do that. Right. Um, and so we need to know how they are doing with their, with their stuff. Uh, we're past the age of just, here's your nutrition information. We'll talk in two weeks. Right. It's, now the coaches, the top coaches are with their clients almost every single day. Um, and it's the reason they can't take on any more clients because that's what people are looking for. And it's reason, it's the reason they can charge top, like top dollar because they're providing, um, that personal connection. And that's how you keep clients for a really long time. And the third piece here is accountability. Okay. This is, this is the base, right? This is the base of our triangle. Um, and this is the X factor in whether or not someone is successful. And this will set you apart from everyone else because accountability is by far the hardest of these three. Um, because if you don't have systems in place, uh, you are going to spend your entire life texting people and figuring out how they're doing. And it's, it's going to be, it's going to be miserable. And so most people give on it, give up on it pretty quick. Uh, because they, it's just, it's, it's really, it's almost impossible to do well without systems and software. Um, if you're working with more than five people, 10 people. Um, and right now most people just rely on accountability. Like, Hey, if they show up for their workout, we're holding them accountable, kind of, but not really. So how to make accountability easy, right? Some, it needs to be simple. Okay. Accountability needs to be simple. Yes or no. Did you do it or didn't you do it? You know, do 10 minutes, do at least 10 minutes of activity done or not done. Like simple, done or not done. And these are actually questions we ask our clients all the time, done or not done. Did you do it or did you do it? And when, how we frame it to our clients too is we don't, we don't say like one is good or bad. They are what they are. Like I don't care if you answer all not dones. That's fine. But that's information for me as a coach to be able to then help you get to more dones. And so we frame it that the act of checking in is what's really important, right? The act of checking in is what, what's important. And then from there, we can help to get some more done. But if I don't know how you're doing as a coach, like I'm not going to be able to help you be successful. So we need to make sure that the systems we have for accountability are simple, right? They're simple and people will actually do them. A good example here is like a food journal, right? If any of you have given a client a food journal to keep, um, unless they're your rockstar clients and we all have those 5% that will like 
walk through a move or walk to the <laughs> walk through a swamp of COVID for us. Right. Um, and they'll do anything no matter what. Um, we have to exclude those people. Let's look at the majority. The majority of people, if we ask them to keep a three day food journal, they will like do one day ish and like try and fill in the other days, like two days later because they forgot to do it. And like, it's like pulling teeth to keep, get someone to keep a food journal. Um, and so, and that's not that hard, right? They're just writing down what they're eating. And so uh, we need to make things as simple as possible. So we actually get them to, to do the things we want them to do. And it needs to be frequent right? Accountability is a frequent thing. When we're talking about nutrition coaching, we're talking about things a client is doing every single day. You have to eat every day. Well, you don't have to eat, but like you're going to eat every day, right? You're going to eat every day. And so these are important things. And, and I'm talking about nutrition here, but this could very much apply to lifestyle stuff. If we're talking about sleep or relaxation or stress management, all of these kind of fit into this realm of what we're calling like nutrition coaching. Um, and I'll give you some examples here towards the end on how we, we like execute on this in, in the real world. And then the last piece of accountability needs to be data driven, right? As a coach, I need to have some data to see like, is someone actually doing what they need to do? Um, and that's going to tell me like, all right, so they're doing what they need to do. Are the results changing? Cool. Continue course. Are they doing what they need to do, but the results aren't changing? then we need to fix something that's wrong, right? And if I don't have that data, like it's, I'm just, I'm just guessing, right? I need to know if they're being compliant. I need to know that piece because if they're not compliant, it really doesn't matter, right? And you know, if they're compliant and then is the result, are they getting the result that they need to get? Uh, so accountability is the third. One. Now we talk about pricing. Like how would we price anything like this? That's probably everyone's major question is how would we price this? So there's two different ways that I look at pricing. Okay. The first one is an add on. Okay. So remember this would work well for like the courses, right? Works really well for the course. It can work well for the evergreen. Actually it can work well for all three as an add on. Okay. Just to give you guys some examples of like what's out there in the world, precision nutrition. Okay. For their lean eating program, it's a 12 month program. Their sticker price is 179. It's a 12 month program. So that comes out to be a little over two grand for that program. Okay. Not cheap. Okay. Not cheap, but people pay it. Um, I know some that are even much higher. Okay. Uh, they typically sell theirs for 97. If you're on the pre-sale list, 97 bucks. So that's about you know, 1200 bucks, right? 1200 bucks for the year of coaching. And their ratio is like one, two hundreds. Okay. One of their coach is not, one of their coaches is not coaching 10 people. They are coaching hundreds of people. Um, cause that is, that's kind of, that's their job. Uh, and the next one down that I want to show you is Weight Watchers. Okay. Weight Watchers on their, uh, highest level, their coaching, coaching level, right, is $12.69 a week, which is another interesting way to price too, right? $12.69 a week. Um, and so that actually gives you four extra weeks to charge versus charging per month. Um, and that comes out to be about $650 a year um, to do Weight Watchers program. And most of you know what Weight Watchers entails, you know what's involved with it, um, but $650 a year. Like if you got, your, if you got even 20 or let's say 20% of your clients to invest an extra $650 per year with you, I think you'd be pretty happy, right? Um, just 10 people, that's 6,500, you know, 20 people, that's 13,000. Like the numbers can add up pretty quick. And this is fairly cheap. Okay. This is fairly cheap. That's very, these are still kind of the, those group models. And actually the model that I like the most and what we're moving to is what I call the solution pricing model where it isn't an add-on, it's not a la carte, we don't pick this and pick this, it is what is the thing that you need to accomplish, okay, awesome, here is the solution, right? So what I see most facilities doing, and this is the way that I operated forever, it's like, hey, client comes into you, they sit down for a success session, I wanna lose weight, cool, we go through everything, we figure out we're a good fit, and then the conversation is, all right, uh, I think you should work out three times a week, cool. Awesome. They sign the, they sign them and then they come in they work three times, work out three times a week. Maybe we give them some nutrition information, that kind of stuff. Another client comes to you. Hey, I want to move better. We go through the consultation and I suggest, Hey, I think you should train two, three times a week. Awesome. They sign and then they do it. Another person comes in. Hey, I want to build some muscle. Cool. Three times a week works for you too. All right. So we just sell numbers of times, number of trainings per week. That's how most people do it. Um, or most gyms do it as well. And yeah, maybe they're going to join during a transformation challenge, or maybe they're going to join with, with something else. And maybe we give them a PDF or something like that, but it's not really like a solution, right? It's not the solution that the client needed if they were interested in something like weight loss. 
And so one thing that we've done at my facility is we have now created a solution for weight loss. So when I am in a consultation with a client and they express to me that they're looking to lose weight, we go through all of the motivational interviewing stuff. We figure out that they're ready to make some changes. Then we present our solution to them. Um, and our solution is either fire or facilitate. And I'll show you what these are in my facility, but fire or facilitate. And then after we decide on fire, we figure out how many times a week they should be doing training. And so we'll start with whatever we feel is going to be best for them. And then maybe that's three times. And then we can always downsell into less if they need to. But that nutrition thing is staying there because that is the most important part for weight loss is the nutrition aspect, the nutrition, the accountability, and the coaching. That is more important than the workouts. Okay? And so the workouts are coming second. And then we'll adjust. If that price point doesn't work for them, it doesn't fit their budget, we will adjust workouts. But we're not getting rid of the nutrition. So um, that's going to allow us to give the client the solution that we feel is best for them. Okay. If they're coming to us for weight loss, they need to have a nutrition solution. Um, and th there's an exercise component bolted onto it, but the nutrition solution needs to be first. But if I have a client that comes to me and they're not really interested in the nutrition piece, they don't want to lose weight. They just want to move better, um, get in the gym, get a little sweat on. Okay. Awesome. I'm not going to suggest our fire solution. I'm going to suggest our foundation solution, which is the movement piece. So how many days, and then I'm going to figure out how many days a week they should be training, three days a week, four days a week. And that's what I'm going to present to them as the best solution to their problem. They're having a problem right now with getting to the gym to work out. And so I'm going to pre present them with the solution of working out because that's what they want to accomplish. Um, but that's going to be different than the weight loss client. And so we need to think about our pricing and think about how we present things to clients as the solution to their problem. Because now it just makes it a no brainer, right? Client comes to you, they want to lose weight. Cool. I have the weight loss program. Client comes to you, you want to move better. Cool. I have the move better program. And so it's now matching the solution with the problem. Okay. Rather than saying, Hey, I have a problem. Cool. We're going to do three times a week training, or we're going to do personal training. We'll talk about nutrition. Like it's not a really a good, a good solution that the client can really comprehend and, and, um, and really hold on to. Right. And so we've given all of ours names because it just makes it easier to talk about when you name things, it, it makes it something right. Um, and so we'll talk about that stuff here next. So here is an example okay, of how we have moved with my pricing at my facility. Um, and this is all very recent. This all came out of the shutdown COVID stuff. This, this is actually kind of a blessing. Actually, we'll see. It's a little bit of a gamble, but kind of a blessing because it allows us to make a massive change in our business without people getting all upset, right? Um, because desperate times call for desperate measures. And um, so this allows us to do it. So here's an example. And my facility is a little bit different. Just to give you guys a little background. We have two facilities. We have a 24 hour facility. Um, and then we have our, um, then we have our training facility um, where we do all of our coaching, large group training, uh, which is going to stay virtual for a long time. And then we have our semi-private training, which we're not personal training, um, which is four clients to a coach. And we actually just changed our model. We were a 60, 60 minute model. Now we're a 30 minute model, but the client's still in our facility for 60 minutes. Um, so I, I actually have one coach that can work with eight people in an hour where before, if we had eight people in an hour, we needed two coaches there. Um, but that's, that's like a completely another webinar in and of itself. So here's how we built it. We have our foundation track, we have our fire track and we have our facilitate track. So our foundation track, right? That is our training track. Okay. That is the foundation. We need training. Cool. That's where you would be. And then we go down. Are you virtual streaming? Are you limited? Are you unlimited team training? Are you two times a week, three times a week, or four times a week, semi-private or personal training, right? And then that's going to be your pricing structure. And just to give you some context for price too, I am in rural Minnesota. Okay. I am in probably the lowest of the lowest markets that anyone is in. Okay. And so, uh, my price is priced accordingly to my market and so you should probably be higher than me okay if you are lower than me you need to change um, because I am in the low like small rural we're talking small like 5,500 people and the next town with more than 10,000 people is 35 to 40 minutes away right so it's kind of isolated rural community farming community you know average household income of $40,000 like seriously like so, and so if you're looking at this as, as an example, be higher than me, okay? Um, and then uh, we have different memberships that are included. So for our clients, we include access to our 24 hour facility. We have an infrared sauna. We sell a lot of supplements, quarterly goal setting meetings, that kind of stuff. Um, and so we're kind of nudging people into certain areas. 
Um, so the first one is foundations. The second one is fire. Okay, so fire is our evergreen nutrition coaching program. Think Weight Watchers. We are modeling it after Weight Watchers. And what our fire, our fire program consists of is we've built out a minimum of six month curriculum. It can be extended if we need to, but a minimum of a six month curriculum. Um, and that is a group curriculum. You start at A and then you move to B and then you move to C and then you move to D. We have some stopping points in there that we can review a client's progress over that previous period and then have them repeat things if they need to. So about every, I think it's eight weeks. So about every eight weeks we have them pause and then we look at, we review how their last eight weeks went and if they struggled with any actions in those last eight weeks, they repeat those for another couple of weeks and then they move on to the next phase. So we have different phases of that. So uh, right now we've built out three phases of it. Um, and so that's our, that's our fire, okay? And then what we do for kind of the Weight Watcher meeting piece is we do a virtual meeting. So once a week, it's a virtual meeting, it's at the same time, clients can jump on, get that accountability from the coach. The coach gives a short little lesson, talks about what they're seeing, and then people share successes, right? They share successes, they share what's going on in their life, and then they also share struggles and so we can work through them as a group, okay? Same time, same place, Zoom every week, okay? And that's our, that's our, that's our meeting. And then for that too, our clients need to do weekly weigh-ins. That's another part of that accountability. So they need to jump on the in-body and do a weigh-in every week if that's, their, if that's their goal. And the next level up is facilitate. Okay, so facilitate to us is one-to-one -one coaching, okay? They have a one-to-one -one meeting with a coach every single week, okay, until they accomplish their goal until, or until they want to move to something else. Um, and you'll see we've kind of priced things accordingly based upon what our prices are. And so for us, for our group membership, for the FIRE add-on, we felt that $40 was good, that we're going to scale this enough that $40 a month is good for a client. Um, we're kind of in line with those, that Weight Watcher type model. Um, facilitate, that's an extra $100 a month for us. Okay, an extra $100 a month for us. That may be more for you where you're at, but for us, uh, it's about $100 a month. And that is a 15 minute meeting every week. Okay, 15 minute meeting every week with that client. And kind of down below on here, you can see some of the other things that we have, but, um, or the different components of it. But it's basically foundation is our training. That's, that's training. We do provide nutrition information to them in like a drip sequence over the course of the year, but it's not, it's not, it's not pinpointed. Okay? We're, not, we're not hammering nutrition. Fire, group-based nutrition coaching, and then facilitate is our uh, personalized nutrition. So you'll notice we use the evergreen model with fire. We use the custom model with facilitate, and you might be wondering, like, hey, deadline-driven, like what's going on there? So we actually, we originally started with the deadline driven model and then we moved to an evergreen because we have the staffing to be able to handle it. Um, but we still use the deadline driven model for all of our uh, lifestyle coaching programs. Um, so we uh, talk about sleep and meditation, that kind of stuff. We have a six week lifestyle program that we've built out um, and that is a deadline driven. We charge anywhere from 79 to 150 for the course. And then it's a six week course that people go through. Um, and so that's one that we run at least a few times a year and it's extremely popular because um, that's definitely something that's forefront in a lot of people's minds. Um, so we run all three of these in our business. Um, we have the deadline driven for specific courses. We have evergreen for our fire membership. And then we have our uh, custom for the facilitate. And so we kind of look at all of those and then, and then price them, price them accordingly. So, um, the, really the game is the change, the game is changing, right? Um, and to win this new game, you have to provide solutions, right? And not just workouts. And that's how you're going to keep clients for a, a really, really long time and ultimately help them accomplish their goals, right? Like our, our job, the reason we exist as a business is because we're solving a problem. Okay. And so just make sure that you're being very clear on the problems that you're solving. And if weight loss and nutrition is one of the, if weight loss is one of those problems you're solving, you need a nutrition component and it's going to allow you to increase your prices, make more money um, and keep clients a whole lot longer because you're solving their problem, right? They will evolve away from weight loss after a time and, and understand the gym for really what it is. Um, but, um, at the beginning, we need to have these, these nutrition conversations. And this can happen if you're in a facility, but this can also happen when you're out. So one of the things that we were able to do when we left, like, all right, we had to shut down 48 hours. Cool. What are we going to do? We immediately launched a nutrition coaching program. 
for everyone right there. And we had a bunch of our members jump on it because we actually didn't, uh, we didn't stop any of the memberships. We just had people keep going because we were providing virtual training, all these other things. And then we added in this nutrition component uh, because we wanted to provide even more value to people. And we weren't open. No one was coming in our doors and we were still able to provide that nutrition component. Nutrition is probably the easiest thing to go online with, right? Because it doesn't take me being physically with you or training being physically with you. I'm going to be a better coach. Like, there's, I don't think there's much argument with that. But nutrition coaching, we have the technology nowadays to be able to do it extremely well um, and still be able to get the human-to-human -human interaction with things like Zoom. So if you take anything away from this, if you take anything away, it is provide solutions, not just workouts, solutions, not two times a week, three times a week, or unlimited, like actual solutions to problems. And if you do that, you will, you will definitely win because you're solving problems. So that is that. What questions do we have, if any? Yeah, we've got a couple. Um, I should be able to pull this up. Well. Sylvia's asking, can you expand a little bit the description of your 15 minute one-to-one -one meeting? It seems kind of short, so how, how did you figure out how to get those done? All right. Dan, I'm gonna hold on a second. You're probably talking to me, but now you should be able to go. There we go. All right, Dan, should I just go through this q and I can see this. Yeah, if you can see it, for sure. Yeah, so Sylvia's the, the one here with three questions, I see. Nice. Uh, do you have a resource you like to purchase pre-made content that is hopefully modifiable? Yes, I do have a resource. Um, because I'm one of the founders of Coach Catalyst, that was a, uh, a core component of what we, we built out. So we have 30-plus programs, four-week, six-week, eight-week transformation challenges. We have a six-month nutrition coaching program. We have multiple like kind of six, eight, 12 week nutrition coaching programs, lifestyle coaching program. Really how I treat our software coach catalyst is an, it's an extension of my facility. And so anything that we develop for our facility, we typically put in there so that other coaches can use it. Um, but we want to test it with real people first. Um, but there are a number of different, there's a number of different kind of thinkers and thought leaders that create programs that are six weeks, eight weeks long, um, that are great things that you can utilize to be able to, uh, to run some programs, but yeah, don't feel like you need to create content from scratch. Um, Jan said, where are you at in Minnesota? I grew up in Gaylord. Gaylord is about one hour from me. So uh, I know exactly where you're at in Minnesota. Um, so yeah, good, awesome. Um, I don't see a lot of other major things in here. Anything I'm missing, Dan? Well, can you describe the the 15 minute one-to-one -one meeting? How you, cause I, I was wondering too, like how do you keep people who want to ask more questions or yeah. want to go 20 or 25 or, you know? Yeah, exactly. So we always have a buffer. So, um, so we, when our coaches schedule meetings, it's always, they put up a 30 minute block. And so, um, so that they have a buffer at the end. Uh, the first one is just kind of setting an expectation um, and being very um, deliberate in kind of the questions that are, that are being asked. And as a, you kind of have to steer the meeting. And, and then sometimes it's be like, hey, let's just table this for next week because I really want to dig into this. Like I know where you're going with this. And so let's, let's table it for next week. And I'm always keeping notes during my meetings. And so then we'll bring it up right away next week and, and dig into it. But like you're always going to run into someone that just kind of go keeps talking. And having that hard 30 minutes, that's like we have to be done. That gives us that hard time. But most people are going to be kind of 10 to 15 minutes because you're meeting so frequently. Um, you don't have as much to talk about. Um, you're very like, you can just like, hey, how'd it go? What's going on? What barriers did you have? All right, what's, what's the focus for next week? And we can be very kind of on point with it. Um, but there'll definitely be times where, and if it is something that is like the client really needs to talk about it, I'll just say, hey, let's schedule a time. I, this is really important to you. And so let's just schedule a time and let's sit down and we can talk about this. Um, it doesn't happen enough for like it to, to really have a protocol around it. Um, but for the times that it does happen, those are the clients you keep for life because you know you going out of your way to help them be successful um is 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 really important so yeah great yeah so this is perfect i'll look into coach catalyst so for people wanting to look in at coach catalyst what's the easiest way for them to yeah. check that out get um, started? like anything just google coach catalyst <laughs> coachcatalyst.com great way to figure it out we've got a couple of demo videos on there as well really short if you want to check that out um, yeah, we built Coach Catalyst to be an accountability platform, so you make it really easy to hold your clients accountable, an education platform so you can deliver the information to them, and then a communication platform so you make it really easy to uh, communicate with your clients. Um, and then there's some other fun things in there, like data storage and, and that. But. How, how, how does it work for somebody who's got you know, 12 clients versus somebody who's got 500 clients? 
Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's software really is going to work the same way. Um, but for someone with 500 clients, you're going to be able to provide a much better experience for your clients um, because we can create these like curriculums and everyone in Coach Catalyst has a, a journey. We call it the client journey, it's just a calendar, right? And so every day on their journey, they're going to have one of three things. They're going to have actions, lessons, or messages. So these are all pre-programmed templated things that we build in advance and then we give them onto their journey. And so we can create these really cool paths for the client to go along. Um, and then we can put it onto their journey and then I can look at their journey and see what they have going on today. And if I need to tweak anything, I can. So like for our, from our custom coaching, I have their journey open and we're building their actions based upon that call. We're like, Hey, they want to eat broccoli for breakfast. Cool. We just schedule it in action, eat broccoli for breakfast. And then they mark it off as done. And so we can create that custom stuff right there for them. Um, and then that's the same thing for the client, for the coach that has 12 clients. Like it's about creating the custom experience for them. And like, you can do it with email and maybe a video hosting platform and like other things, but you're going to end up putting a bunch of things together. Like it's possible. It's just going to be more work. Um, and so that's one of the cool things about software is it allows us to put all these pieces together. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know, I know you guys have been a great <clears throat> solution for the huge missing piece for so many fitness studios, right? That accountability, that daily follow up, all those, you know, like you guys say, the other 165 hours a week, right? You know, yeah. clients are like, I'm not getting results. I'm like, I only see you twice a week for half an hour. What do you expect? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, I mean it's, we're, we're moving into a gym. Like, the gym now means a lot more. So the great gyms are the gyms that are providing clients with this information. They're helping with lifestyle. They're helping with stress management. They're helping with nutrition. And that's where the, the clients that really, the clients that you would want that are going to pay your bills for a really long time, um, that's, that's kind of how we need to be serving those clients. Um, and software now exists to make that even easier um, without kind of killing ourselves to make that happen. Um, right, right, right. So, yeah. Yeah, Terry, uh, Terry says, thank you, great information. Do you see Florence's question on uh, social media pages like Facebook and Facebook groups and yeah. all that? Um, so, so we use them. Um, I think Facebook groups are, are great, but I, I think about them in a, as a community aspect. How do clients interact with clients? Okay, That's how we think about with Facebook groups. I don't interact with clients in a Facebook group because one, it's a public forum, and I want that to be a little bit more of a personal connection. I mean, I'm going to connect with them, but I'm not going to like – actively do a ton of coaching right there with them. Um, I think they serve their, their place. If you're looking for more of like a group coaching model where you just want to kind of post things and, but where I run into with Facebook groups is the accountability. Like I've seen a lot of people try and run programs where like, Hey, you know, when you do your thing, check in on this post that you did it. Like that's just super Like I now have to go to Facebook. I have to find the group then I have to find the thread and then I have to post there. Like, you're just going to have, you're going to have 10% of people that do it. They're going to do it no matter what. And they're always going to do it, but you're going to miss out on a huge piece because it's just too challenging for them to actually go through all the steps to make it happen. So we have to just make it as easy as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, over in the chat, J Jason says, absolutely great information. Brilliant webinar. Uh, Mauricio, thank you, Trevor and Dan for having this webinar. Greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks for being on live guys. Um, for folks on the recording, which I'm sure someone's dying to ask a question. Uh, how can they reach out to you, Trevor, or ask more, learn more? Where do you want them to go? Yep, absolutely. CoachCatalyst.com is the best place to go. Um, support at CoachCatalyst.com is a great place to uh, send a question in if you have it. Um, we, do, we do almost daily demos. Um, and so if you want to jump on a live demo, we have a short 10 minute demo on our site so you can see some of the ins and outs of the software um, if you want to check that out. And um, we do also like strategy calls. So one of the things that's maybe different about us than other software developers is we actually live this space, right? Like I'm using Coach Catalyst every single day in my business. Right. And so, um, like I'm, I'm figuring out what's wrong with it because my coaches are yelling at me because ah, this takes too long or this doesn't work. And, um, and so we originally built the software for ourselves. And so we're like, hey, we need to find a way to manage this nutrition coaching at scale, challenges at scale. And we wanna provide a great experience. There were too many times where I had, I, I promised, like it was a challenge. I promised that I was going to help this client be successful, lose 10, 12, whatever pounds during the challenge. And then we gave them all the great information. We gave great workouts, but then they step on the scale at the end and they actually gained weight. And so for me as a coach, that's the most disheartening thing because I had promised that I was going to help you do this. Nice. And had I known that you were struggling early on, like I would have been able to help get you back on track, but because 
because I was dealing with 50, 70 people in this challenge, there's no way I can manage each person really well. So that kind of started us down this journey. Like, how do we, how do we build something that is going to be easy for the client to use and give us the information that we need so that ultimately we never have that situation where someone steps on the scale and they did the opposite of what we promised we would help them do. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what it's all about. So, all right, last two questions here because I yeah. know we got to let you go. Uh, uh, Felicitas says, thoughts on Pro Coach and Marcy, I think similar. Do you use PN Pro Coach? I assume she means Precision Nutrition Pro Coach. Or do you use Coach Catalyst exclusively? I have a hunch on that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so like, like me, like I, I use Coach Catalyst. And so I'll, I'll talk about the differences. So I'm, I'm a PN guy, right? So PN, I've done PN Level 1, PN Level 2. Um, I love i think they're one of the best nutrition education companies out there um jb is awesome um and like they do a phenomenal job from a nutrition education standpoint and so the biggest differences between pro coach and coach catalyst and we have an, actually an article on this um that looks at them is pro coach is pn's lean eating curriculum that's what it is and so it's the same thing that they run with their consumers um and so uh, it's that curriculum and it, it was developed in a very specific way Okay. So they develop, it is their way of coaching people and it's very successful. Um, they've helped hundreds of thousands of people, um, with weight loss. And, and so they have a specific curriculum that they go through. Unfortunately, as a coach, you don't have any influence over that curriculum, right? So all of the videos are going to be JB and Krista, all the curriculum, they wrote it. And so you're really kind of taking a client and putting them into the PN system and you're kind of holding their hand and guiding them along the way, but you're still putting them into someone else's brand. Mm -hmm. And so if you're comfortable with that and you're okay with that, it can work really well. I know a lot of people that have success with that. Um, but there's another subset of people that are like, you know what, it's, I, I love PN, but like, I want to, I want to do me. I want to do kind of my own thing. And coach catalyst, we're kind of on the opposite side. Like you can do all of the things in pro coach, like habits and actions and lessons and that kind of stuff. But you get the say, it comes from you as a coach. So anything that we create, you can actually download, you can modify. And so you can put your colors on it. You can put your logos on it. You can put your signature at the end. And so it's very much coming from you. We're just your technology partner on the back end to help build it so that you can coach your clients. Um, so those are some of the, the big differences. Um, and then there are some like kind of customization things. Like you can get a branded app with Coach Catalyst if you want it. We operate on iOS and Android, we kind of have native apps. Um, you can customize specific to the individual or PN, you're kind of having to stick within their habits and their things. And like for me, I need a tool that's a little bit more like a Swiss Army knife and less like, um, like a, I don't know, a bread knife, right? Yeah. And so I need something to help me do nutrition coaching, do my challenges, do my onboarding processes, do my front end offers, communicate with all my clients, store our data, um, store all my notes. Like I need something that has more capabilities because I'm doing more than just nutrition coaching. Um, so we actually use it with our entire client base, whether they're doing nutrition coaching or not. So, yeah. well, I know you guys have been, uh, doing stuff that's been helping studios add revenue and, and not just add revenue. I mean, to me, it's always about how can we provide a greater experience for our right. clients, serve them better, solve their problems better. Obviously, if we do that better, that leads to more revenue streams, you know. So um, you guys have been doing this for several years. And, and now I think it's not just going to become the additional revenue stream. It's going to become the norm. I mean, people, fitness studios are going to need this. Independent trainers are going to need this. We're going to have to have these sorts of things because uh, the times have changed, you know. So right. I thanks so much uh, for you speaking at our summit next week. Um, yep. Trevor is doing another live session. So for any of you who are on live or you're watching the recording now, he's doing a live session at the summit. Um, he's even doing a, a live Q and a uh, session in one of the afternoon breaks. So you guys can pick his brain some more. So thanks for, for what you're doing. Best of luck to reopen in your studio, uh, wherever you are, whenever that happens, uh, fingers crossed. So uh, sooner than later, we will uh, see you at the summit next week. Thanks again. Love it. Thanks. See ya. See ya.